This is NDTV. And you're watching NDTV Prime. In association with Micromax. Nothing like anything. It is launching this week and we have the review. That's the Audi TT Coupe looking red hot. The very fast and extremely capable new Mercedes AMG C63. And it's finally a big scale up strategy from Yamaha in India. There are new models expected. The 125cc Saluto rides in. So that is an action-packed episode that's coming your way with two very hot cars and that very keen strategy from Yamaha to go big in India. Thank you for joining us. I'm Siddharth Vinayak Patankar. With me is the latest entrant to drive into our market, but it's not just cars like this, isn't it? We have to also keep looking at the high end of the market because uh, it also represents where the Indian buyer is going and where the market is going. So very often some of you say that, hang on, that's not a really relevant product. But you know what? A little eye candy never hurts. So let's get on with it straight away and talk about the Mercedes-Benz C-Class. Now that's a car that's become world car of the year. It's also our premium car of the year. And uh, now you have the AMG Avatar that's coming out. It's the first time that you have the Mercedes AMG branding on one of these derivative cars from the lineup. This is the C63. A car with a superhero complex. Sounds a bit dramatic, but it seems the best and most concise way to describe the Mercedes AMG C63. The C Class on steroids is also the first production variant turned AMG to use the new brand Mercedes AMG instead of being the Mercedes Benz C63 AMG like in the past. The previous C63 was quite a capable car and we're happy to report that the new generation has the goods too to be able to better take on the BMW M3 and M4 and the Audi RS5. And so it's kind of apt that we're back at the Autodromo Internacional do Algarve, better known as the Portimao circuit, to test the new car because it's also where we had put the M3 and M4 through the paces last year. So we're here at the legendary Portimao track in Portugal, quite a perfect testing ground for the C63 AMG. Now the performance car will be available globally in two variants really, uh, but it's the C63S which will come to India finally, which does offer a lot more power and a lot more fun, especially on tracks like these. So let's go check out that monster and see what it offers on the track. aspirated 6.2 litre V8 engine was quite a beast but the new C63 is equally potent and yes it is the first time that the C63 will have two variants both use differently tuned variants of the same bi-turbo 4 litre V8 that also powers the red hot AMG GT which don't forget is the world performance car of the year the base AMG C63 delivers 476 horsepower and 650 Nm of torque, while the India-bound C63S puts out 510 ponies and a huge 700 Nm. The V8 engine is mated to a multi-clutch 7-speed automatic transmission, which is quite precise on this rear-wheel drive. Acceleration on the S model is slightly faster than the regular AMG C63 and you can get from 0 to 100 km per hour in just 4 seconds. The car sounds pretty good too and was especially fun roaring down the Portimao track. We also drove the C63 out on the roads outside the track to get a true feel of the car in everyday conditions. 
The C63's right control sport suspension with three-stage adjustable damping can be tuned for either ideal long-distance comfort or track-style feel. The speed-sensitive sport steering is lots of fun and the carbon ceramic disc brakes provide good stopping power. The ride quality is decent with the comfort mode offering the soft ride that most Indian buyers enjoy. Now if only we had unlimited smooth tarmac like this in India too, right? The gorgeous design of the C-Class hasn't been tinkered with too much on the C63. But enough has been done to give it the AMG flavour. Reshaped front and rear bumpers, new side skirts and AMG grille, these are the obvious bits. The C63's front end is also 53mm longer than the regular sedans thanks to the new V8 engine. At the rear, the sporty rear diffuser, chrome quad exhaust tips and an integrated trunklet spoiler finish the transformation. Besides the AMG badging, of course. Keeping you comfortable inside the beast, the plush and luxurious interior of the C-Class get a bit edgy as they go AMG as well. The dash boasts black handcrafted leather with crystal grey stitching, there are race style seats, a flat bottomed steering wheel and touches of carbon fibre thrown about for good measure. The AMG exclusive analogue clock and the AMG dynamic select switch next to the touchpad are quite eye-catching. Most of the interiors can be customised depending on customer preferences but suffice to say it would be tough to go wrong with this beauty. Expect the C63S to hit Indian roads by the end of the year and it could be priced around 1.2 crore rupees directly against the BMW M3. Now that will be a monstrous battle worth waiting for, isn't it? So the C63 arrives later this year. Now the interiors of the Renault Logi, that's getting a lot of attention because when you talk about the MPV space, really it's comfort that should be paramount and this car delivers on that. Especially if you're going to look at buying it and have a chauffeur drive you, well then the second row becomes really important and it's got a very comfortable seat, it's got a lot of headroom and uh, overall the ergonomics seem to work and don't forget that the Duster has already proved to be fairly durable here in India and this is built on the same platform. Right, now speaking about proving your credentials, that's something that Yamaha needs to do quite urgently. Well, if you think about it, the brand has been here for three decades and yet remains a fairly small player. It is fifth in the market with a market share of about four odd percent. But finally, things are scaling up. There's going to be the inauguration of its new plant outside Chennai very soon. And in fact, to survey that, you had uh, Yamaha's global CEO come into town. He spoke exclusively to CNB. There's always been a lot of talk about the kind of pressure that the Indian automobile industry continues to find itself under. But off late, some of the focus has shifted to the two-wheeler space when it comes to a whole lot of new launches, new announcements, and also a lot of uh, flux when it comes to the position of different players in the market. To discuss all of that, as well as uh, one particular new product that's recently written in, we have with us uh, the president and CEO of uh, Yamaha from Japan, all the way from Japan, I should say, Mr. <laughs> Hiroyuki Yanagi. Good to see you here in uh, Chennai. Thank you for joining us, Yanagi-san. Uh, nice to meet you. Congratulations on, on the launch. Uh, the 125cc segment is where you've launched this product, and uh, it is, of course, highly competitive. Uh, it's also a volumes driver. Uh, how do you see this particular product making a difference for you? Yamaha uh, so far uh, attack to the uh, uh, high-end segments and the scooter segments. And uh, as third step, the, uh, uh, we decided to get into the uh, uh, mass commuter segment. This is the, uh, the first the, uh, mass commuter segment for us. And uh, uh, we try to make the uh, uh, best balance of the uh, uh, economy and also fuel mileage and uh, 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 performance. So the, uh, this machine has uh, good the, uh, top speed performance, also the, uh, uh, probably the, uh, uh, one of the uh, 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 best fuel mileage at the uh, industrial uh, top level. So the, uh, we can offer the uh, various uh, uh, good combination of values. Uh, the, the Indian press, of course, uh, is always uh, perhaps overactive, and so we keep a uh, very close track on what's happening with your product portfolio and other markets, specifically markets like Indonesia, even, even Europe for that matter. Um, there are specific products that keep getting discussed in the Indian context, like the R25 or um, the R3. 
um, the, the tree city as well with, uh, you know, which could create a new segment. Uh, how close are you to be able to address all of that? Because the consumer seems to be ready to accept some of these new portfolio products. Especially the uh, last two years, the, uh, we uh, could make the uh, good products to all over the world, like uh, our cities that symbolize uh, racing technologies. It also looks great, that bike really yeah. looks great, I have to say. <laughs> uh, finally, we uh, presented the uh, R1 top model. Also the uh, MT, it uh, stands the uh, master of talk. It's really creating the uh, uh, very original the uh, segment uh, from Yamaha. And uh, uh, also the uh, Max, uh, which have the uh, T-Max and the uh, X-Max and uh, recently N-Max. And uh, also Tree City, the, uh, the uh, first the uh, uh, three wheelers uh, in the uh, global markets. So the, uh, the, uh, we started to offer various uh, new concept the uh, product lines, and uh, uh, of course the uh, uh, it could be uh, getting to the uh, uh, Indian market too. The, uh, uh, we are thinking the uh, what's best timing uh, for us to get in the uh, uh, Indian markets. Uh, we uh, prepare for that. If you look at what's happened in the Indian market the last 18 odd months, uh, there have been certain, maybe not huge successes, but in the context of their segment, big successes like uh, the KTM range of motorcycles or even, even small players like Benelli now coming uh -huh. in. Uh -huh. uh, the price points uh, that the consumer seems to be accepting today go up to 3, 4 lakh rupees. Um, and there is certain volume that resides there and a brand like yours, could benefit from that. So how, how quickly would you like to address that? Because the segments have started to get created already in India. Yeah, uh, we are ready. Yeah, well, whenever uh, uh, we can eat good timing, we should be ready to whatever uh, customer wants. How do you then view the development that you had talked about, uh, Yamaha had talked about a couple of years ago, which is uh, the, the $500 motorcycle? Do you think that there is still a very large room for something like that? Maybe not just in India, but in other markets as well, but also in India. Oh yeah, the, we uh, uh, continue to make the uh, uh, same project as we announced the, a couple of years ago. And uh, at probably the, uh, uh, soon we'll, we can uh, make a, a presentation of the new products. I think the, uh, that's not only for the uh, Indian product, uh, Indian market, but also the African and the other new markets too. But, but that will be made in India too? Oh yeah. Okay, many, many thanks for speaking to us. Yeah, thank you. And thank uh, you very much. It's, it's good, to, good to have you on the channel with us. Thank you. Thank you very much. Now I'm in the third row here of the Logi, and uh, it's the one thing that I even wanted to check out myself because there's been so much talk about the comfort that this car offers. It is great on headroom, but yes, of course, on long journeys, taller adults aren't going to find this great. For kids, though, I have to say this row is absolutely perfectly suited. On that note, let's slip into a very short break here on CNV. We come back with that Audi TT Coupe. Welcome back to CNB. It is now time to show you that very hot Audi TT Coupe. Now we showed you the Roadster a few weeks ago and that is in its TTS Avtar which is more powerful. But the good news is that the TT Coupe itself is also extremely capable and a lot of fun. This is the third generation of the car and it is what launches first in India. Here it is. Simply put, the new third generation Audi TT Coupe is better than the previous car. Surprising to start a review that way, yes? Well, here's the thing.
Audi's original TT from the 1990s was a unique car that spawned many rivals. It has a legend kind of status and so Audi has no choice but to simply get it right with this car in particular. The second generation TT never did get my motor running though and so I am indeed happy that this new car has excited me. And now I will tell you why. Unlike the last generation of the TT which also had a diesel version, this one is sticking to the TFSI petrol range for now. And in India it's only going to be this one engine with uh, one spec, one trim that's going to be available. So we'll wait and see about future variants. But what I also want to tell you is that it belts out 230 horses, this engine, which gives you a top speed of 250 kilometers per hour. It's a claim I'm definitely not testing today for sure. One big difference between this car and the previous gen is that the Quattro all-wheel drive system can vary the power distribution to the front and rear axle, especially in dynamic mode where it can send as much as 100% of the power to the rear wheels only. Let me tell you straight away that this engine is a gem. Despite the comparatively modest power figure, the car charges ahead with a plum. This car is also 50 kilograms lighter than its predecessor, which helps the cause of being swift. It can go from 0 to 100 kilometers per hour in just 5.3 seconds. There is a scant touch of turbo lag, but the transmission has been so well mated to this motor that it negates any issues. You may think the lag throws up. The dual clutch gearbox is quick and is especially fun on the downshift. The car also handles very well, especially taking to tight corners with taut efficiency. The steering is also precise and very engaging. At first glance, it's instantly obvious that this is the Audi TT. It's got the pronounced wheel arches, it's got the uh, sloping roof line, very, very typical characteristics. In fact, perhaps more so than the second generation in many ways. What you do see on this car is the uh, new design language for Audi as a brand. It's not just the uh, matrix LED headlights, but even the way the front grille has been done, it is different. You also now have it on the new second generation Q7, which will also be coming to India pretty soon, sometime later this year. Inside, the TT is extremely different and not at all like its stablemates, which is a relief. The last TT was way too much like any other Audi to a certain extent. This car has a definite sports car cabin feel. No central display screen with all functions showing up in the virtual instrument cluster that also doubles up as a navigation screen. And I totally love the new climate control system. It is operated by using controls mounted onto the air vents. So neat. The front seats are comfortable and spacious, though they sit a bit high. And the rear seat is recommended only for those who are no taller than four feet. The car launches later this week, which is when we will all know the price too. But it is a welcome addition to the Audi India family. And happily, it is TT enough to get you smiling. The drive feel of the Logi is what also will be its winner because to a lot of individual buyers especially, and frankly even to fleet buyers, the comfort level will be uh, something that will reduce fatigue, especially for long drives. And uh, the car responds well, it has a car-like character. I think it's something that a lot of people will like. So, uh, of course, these are things we have told you before in our review as well. Please react to what you've seen on the program today. You had two hot cars and uh, that exclusive chat with uh, Yanagi-san as well. 
Tell me what you thought about that. Anything you'd like to see on the program as well. And uh, please remember, when you're driving on the roads, especially city roads, don't use your high beam. Please do wear your seat belts front or back. And if you're on a two-wheeler, front or back, please wear your helmets. All right, I will say goodbye. And I promise to see you next week.